Hey everyone, and welcome back to Westeros Weekly, where we are discussing the penultimate episode of Game of Thrones Season 7. I'm Leanne Aguilera. I'm Ash Carlson, and there was way less death than we thought last night, because guess who survived? This guy. Tormund survived, but someone very important did not. We are going to get to all of that. We're going to be talking about the fact that the Stark sisters are ready to kill each other. Yes, they are. <laughs> and there was obviously a very important moment involving a dragon. So let's kick everything off with the Night's Watch, catching yes. up on everything important that happened last night. And we got to see the seven samurai, or as you call them... Snow Team Six. Snow Team Six. <laughs> fighting the army of the dead. And I kept yelling at my television the entire time because I thought this was the stupidest plan in the world. Why, why do you think it was stupid? I thought that it was really creative the way that they had all of these guys stuck. The army of White Walkers is coming to get them. What was your least favorite part about it? I just thought, I don't, no, I loved the episode. Yes. I loved everything about it, but I just thought it was a straight up dumb plan. They just went with seven of them. And of course they're gonna, I mean, they should have died. They should have died. Okay, I get what you're saying. But so you're saying they went in, they went to go capture one white, and in, they're surprised that they encountered the entire army. What were they gonna do? Yeah, why were they surprised they, they encountered the entire army? We've always seen them all together. What were they, what, what were they gonna do? They just were they gonna, like, follow up, like, behind them and just, like, grab one and take it? I don't understand what their actual plan was because it was so freaking stupid. <laughs> I will say this, and I'm about to, like, upset an entire fandom. I will say that this scene these whites is what the Walking Dead wishes they were. Who? I don't think that's that upsetting. I think a lot of people are on your side on yeah, that. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I don't but watch then, that of show. course, so our guys are trapped, and who saves the they day? They should have died, but luckily, Danny comes to the rescue. Our dragon queen is here coming to the rescue. Oh my god. This was absolutely epic. This was epic, but can we talk about the fact that once again, the season in Game of Thrones, they're completely disregarding time and space? Yeah, a lot of people are complaining about that. I think that it was because, you know, Gendry ran back to the Eastwatch, sent to Raven, the Raven got to Danny. Danny flew in with her dragon. Someone on Reddit did a breakdown and said that roughly the guys were waiting there about five days for Danny to get there. Do you think that that's true, and what do you think the real answer is? That sounds about right, because I was in my head, I was like, did she get there in, like, four hours? I don't understand. This yeah. doesn't make any sense. You're breaking all the rules. Ashley also made a really great point. When the guys are sitting there, and they're freezing, and they've... Go for it, Ash. Why didn't Beric just light up his fire sword? They're freezing to death. <laughs> what are the rules of this sword? Does he have to be in battle when he uses it? Because he can just light it up whenever he wants. Does he have to be fighting somebody? Or can he just use it for a heat source? Can he just... I, I don't understand why they weren't... They were freezing to death. One of them died. <laughs> and he had a fire sword. Doesn't make any sense. He did have wounds from a lot earlier of rules, in the episode. A lot of rules are being broken A lot of rules are being broken, but we've got to talk about, of course, the most gut-wrenching part of this episode. I did cry. Um, the Night King, turns out, is an Olympic javelin thrower. <laughs> and... Just, and, like, that form, just putting up his arm, just tossing it through. Like, let's take a look at this let's moment. Take a cried. And can we just talk about, if you guys are wondering why the Night King was able to kill a dragon and Bronn was not, it's because he went right for the jugular, the <laughs> fire exploded like that. He's not coming back from that. And I'm sure there's some kind of magical element involved in there, but... As upset as I was to see Viserion die, I was pleased that it was the Night King who was able to kill him, rather than having it be via Cersei. Right. Because that would have just given her way too much pleasure. Also, I gotta give it up to Danny for her reaction here because I thought she, they were not gonna be able to even pull her out of there. Oh my gosh. And she Amelia is... Amelia Clark in this episode I thought was absolutely amazing. Yeah, we've definitely seen some acting progress from her along this show because she was awesome last night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she, she really like was kind of... Don't like you could it's, see her emotion, but could, she was able to get out of there. You could see she the is a pit queen. forming in her stomach. Yeah, exactly. She is a queen. 
Uh, but but this then something else us... happens with the Pisarian. Oh my gosh, this is by far the iciest moment of the night, maybe even the iciest moment of the season. Of the series, of perhaps. Of the series. So we, oh, should we just go right into the clip? Let's go right into the clip. Take a look. This is effed up, <gasps> effed up. <sighs> now this was a fan theory that was floating around for a while and we finally saw it come to life, or not life, I don't know. Come to the afterlife? Come to the afterlife. <laughs> um, yeah, the Night King has his own dragon. His own dragon. Prediction, I think that Viserion is now going to emit blue flames. Okay, I we were talking think... about this before. I was like, is he gonna? Is it gonna be ice? Is it gonna be fire? I like, your, I like the blue flames. I think yeah. blue flames. Here's what I think might happen. I think that now that the Night King has his own dragon, he's going to use it on the wall and use it to melt down the wall and hopefully that'll break the magic spell and then all the whites can come into the north. I know. We still have Bran though. We still, what is that going to do? Bran could take over this dragon. Oh, okay. Oh, but can he take over a dragon once it's already been controlled by the Night King? Because the Night King also kind of has some third-eyed raven elements to him. I don't know yet. I but, don't know. We don't but know. But that is the only thing that is hold, <laughs> giving me hope for this entire scenario is that we still have Bran. <laughs> okay, well, I would have loved to have seen Bran jump into Zombie Bear last night. Can we please talk about the fact that this was not the only animal that we saw possessed by the Night King? Can I have a hot take? Yes. Kind of hated this scene. Really? Yeah, I think they were trying to set up the fact that animals can become... I agree. I think that it was a little bit too much of a foreshadowing element, although it did give them a chance to show off those amazing... Fire swords. Right. I think um, it just, it stressed me out a little too much. I don't know. <laughs> this is a personal vendetta, but it stressed me out a lot. I, what other animals would you like to see? We, I mean, we already saw the horse. We, they ride the horses. We yes. already know that animals can, like, it this just, I did not need this, need this scene, but it's fine. Not a polar bear fan? I guess not. <laughs> Um, well, we did get a huge revelation in last night's episode. We learned, well, let's just take a look let's at Let's just clip. take a look. Let's it's, go right into it. Let's go. If you kill a general, you kill them all. If you kill a White Walker, you kill all the whites that it animated, reanimated. I think so that's awesome. That is a big thing because obviously we see later in the episode that Barrack's like, let's just go for the Night King, y'all. Yep. Because if we kill him, the whole army goes down, probably. Yes. But obviously we've seen that the Night King is impervious to fire. He's walked through it before. So killing him is going to be quite the feat. Who do you think that's going to come down to? John. Yeah. Probably. John. Probably. Yeah, everything's going to come down to John and Danny, which leads us into Keeping, Keeping Up, up with, with Khaleesi. Khaleesi. <laughs> that was so out of tune. That was. <laughs> we, la, la, la. We, we're not singers, y'all. <laughs> we are not. But we do see Danny and John falling in love a little bit. It was so sweet. And he calls her Danny, which I've been calling her all We've season been calling because I'm afraid to say to Daris. But she doesn't want her, him to call her Danny. He doesn't want that. Or no, she doesn't want that. Because it reminds her of her, her brother. brother and probably Viserion. Like, too soon, bro. Too soon, bro. Um, but, but she does see, you know, his wounds. And also, this was a pivotal scene because she's like, I saw the army. It's real. Yes, I completely believe you. And he's like, Well, I believe you. And I believe in you. And then he did this. Let's take a look. Not Danny. Not about my queen. Those who swore allegiance to you. They'll all come to see you for what you are. <laughs> I hope I deserve it. Oh, feels. Would you date someone that's 5'8"? 
If it was Jon Snow, then yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. whole running gag of the show is that Jon is short. Jon is short. He's not that short. He's not that short. For what he lacks in height, he makes up for her in heroism. Exactly. Um, I really did love that moment. I love that I'm starting to feel that they both are really feeling each other. And I don't care if they're related. I'm here for it. Not but a thing, yeah. I thought that it was really important that Danny shared with Jon that she can't have children. She said, like, Viserion, the rest of her dragons, they are the only children that she'll ever have. So I thought it was a nice subtle way of kind of being like, hey, before we really commit to this, you should know I'm barren. Okay, but so here is my question. Yes. If Danny cannot have children, who is going to take Who is the her successor? Exactly. And this is a whole theme of this episode because Tyrion asks her very tearfully, Don't I, go. Don't die. You have no one to take your spot. And I don't And it, we don't know if she will. She got so upset with him, but, like, obviously he only has her best interest at heart. It almost seemed like she was threatened by him asking her that. I think it also puts her in a, a kind of an emotional, vulnerable place that she doesn't want to be in. Yeah. The fact that she can't. Yes. Or she thinks she can't have Wait, children. I'm, no way. What are you doing? I'm getting a Stark sister update right now. No, what? It, why? Now? Yeah. <laughs> They're gonna kill each other. Tensions are running high <laughs> at Winterfell between the Stark sisters. And here's an interesting thing is that I am Team Sansa. I am Team Arya. So we are also a little divided today. Hey. So we see this scroll confrontation go down and Arya, yes. I don't know, to me, Arya's just not listening to her and it's driving me crazy and I understand what Sansa was doing. But look at it from Arya's point of view. Arya has been put through hell. Not saying that Sansa hasn't, but so when she sees the scroll, she's like, you betrayed our family. It doesn't matter. I thought it was really interesting when she's like, what, did Cersei put a knife up to your throat? I thought that like she really just called out Sansa because she was a naive little girl. She was, but we, I, the Sansa to me, like Lyanna Mormont. Okay. Want, like she, she wasn't thrust into this world by mistake. She, like Sansa's more of a reluctant hero. She didn't want any of this. She okay. didn't want this for herself. I get but that. now here she is, Lady of Winterfell, making decisions, realizing she's great at it. Okay. And we've really seen her kind of grow into this role. I don't think throwing Lyanna Mormont in her face is helping because that's a completely different storyline. So, but from Arya's point of view, she was always raised knowing that she could not do what the boys were doing and knowing that like it was going against all of the customs and everything that her father had told them even though he kind of secretly supported her shooting the arrow and everything but now she's seeing Sansa who never wanted all of this acting as the ruler of Winterfell not even only the lady of Winterfell and really acting as if she's taken over like a guy's position I really think that Arya's feeling a little bit jealous of the fact that yes she reluctantly did not want this but now she's so good at it I just think, I think Sansa's making smart decisions. I just think that she, no, she's not. She's listening to Littlefinger. Is she though, or is she? I don't know. Let's find out. I could even become you. I wonder what it would feel like to wear those pretty dresses, to be the Lady of Winterfell. All I'd need to find out is your face. Can I borrow your face? There is something more to this because I understand that Arya and Sansa have never gotten along, They've but never this seen is eye to eye. This is just some next level stuff. I, th I think there's something else beyond them just not getting along I and not seeing like eye to eye. I would like to think that Game of Thrones is giving us a deeper meaning behind two sisters squabbling. Yeah, I don't think they would. I, I would hope. I would hope they so, wouldn't just. I would hope that Sansa is smart enough to read into the fact that Arya is basically saying, I can take anyone's face and become that person and no one would know, i.e. I could cut off Littlefinger's face, we would still have control of the veil and you would not lose any of control. Because that's the important thing for keeping Littlefinger around mm -hmm. is the fact that they do have the veil behind them. Exactly. So, yeah, I like this. I think... Sansa, it's maybe? Just, it's just up to Sansa to kill Littlefinger and then if she amazing. does that... She could prove to Arya that, hey. Yes. Because what was interesting I am is not that, just a pawn. I know yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah. And it has to be with the cat's paw dagger. Because what I liked was that Littlefinger gave it to Bran, or to Bran to try and gain his trust. Bran rejected Littlefinger, gave it to Arya. Arya is now rejecting Littlefinger and is giving it to Sansa. It's up to her to finally be the last Stark to turn on Littlefinger. And Arya could wear his face and then they patrol the veil and everything is great. And yes. the sisters get along again. Yes. Um, but here's the thing. Do you think that she sent Brienne away for Brienne's own safety? I don't 
know. I, you you said this to me earlier, and it's like, what does Brienne need protecting from? I think to get out of Littlefinger's way, because obviously Littlefinger wants to turn Brienne against Arya, and wants them to fight it out. Right. And wants to eliminate Brienne from the situation. So rather than having Littlefinger do it himself, I think Sansa sent her away in order to protect her. Yeah, I don't think she was just being a bee because obviously Littlefinger was trying to get in her head yes. referencing Brienne, and then all of a sudden Sansa sends her away. There's something more to that. I would hope that Sansa just really cares about Brienne because Brienne has done everything for her. Yeah, Brienne is the best. <laughs> She's the best. And she I, is the best. Like Tormund, I want her and Tormund to make babies together. Mm, I'm, I, I might be a little team Brienne and Jamie because I just want him to get away from Cersei, but... <laughs> and, and you want Tormund to offer yourself. I want Tormund to be single as a Pringle, ready for me. <laughs> Let's take a look at the Race to the Iron Throne, where everybody is standing right now. So, we have uh, John and Danny together. Yeah, because they are killing it. They are killing it. They finally teamed up. John yes. has uh, bent metaphorically the bent the knee. So they are a team now. And Cersei doesn't have a lot behind her right no, now. No, she in, she knows that she doesn't have a leg to stand on. And she knows that her dragon-killing scorpion did not work. Which is going to make everything very interesting next week. Mm. Should we take a look yeah. at the preview? Let's do it. It's for the last episode! <laughs> There's only one war that matters, and it is here. Oh. This is something we have been waiting for since the beginning of the show. Just everybody coming together in one place. Queen, meet Queen. I think it's going to be amazing. What do you think is going to happen? And I agree with Danny that, and Tyrion that Cersei's planning some kind of a trap. I'm really worried. Because they're on her turf. They're in King's Landing. I'm just thinking about, Pat, like, in past seasons, the second to last episode is something crazy happens. Yes. And then the last episode kind of wraps everything up, which makes me think that nobody's going to die this, this you episode. You don't think anyone's going to die? I just, I don't know. I, we, we haven't really had that many significant deaths this year. So I feel like this is going to be the episode where it happens. Each week, we're like, oh, it's going to be Grey Room. Oh, it's going to be Tormund. I made you cry. But I really feel like this is going to be the episode that we're going to lose someone. And it's going to be someone of significance. I'm going to point to our off-screen producer, Mike, here, who thinks that they're, we're going to get that Clegane Bowl, which is a big fan theory of the Mountain and the Hound, having a showdown. One of them dying. If the Hound dies, I would be okay with it because I feel like his character arc has been so transformative because he really redeemed himself because he looked after Sansa so many times. He protected Arya. In this last episode, he really saved Jon's butt. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like if he has to go, he's had such a redeeming arc that it's fine with I me. I 100% agree with you. Yeah, yeah. He's like the unofficial Stark Guardian. Unofficial Stark Guardian. I like it. Here's what I want to know from you guys, since we are so divided. Are you Team Arya or are you Team Sansa? Team Ashley or Team Leanne? Team. Chuck them in the comments below, or you can, of course, tweet us. And tell us all of your Season 7 finale theories, because we're dying to know what happens. We want to know what you guys are thinking. It's going to be our last episode of Westeros Weekly, so come back with us. We should have red wine. We should have red wine at 8 in the morning Why on not? a Monday. That sounds good to me. It's 8 a.m. somewhere. <laughs> 8 a.m. somewhere. Thanks so much, guys, for stopping by. I'm Leanna Aguilera. I'm Ash Krause, and we're going to go watch the solar eclipse. <laughs>